Hey everybody, I'm Nicole Danielle and I wanted to say welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you chose this video to be your first video. You obviously are planning for homeschooling, high school, or um, are in it. So this is going to be all about biology. I have a fifth grader and a tenth grader and we are doing a biology course together because this is our schooling and we do what we want, right? Um, the state tells me what to do, <laughs> kind of, actually it does. However, I've decided to kind of take it into my own hands. I do not have a strong science student. My 10th grader does not like science. He's not interested in it. And I did not want to give him a textbook. I do have it actually with me. I'm gonna show that to you later. I did not want to give him a textbook science course and let him fail it and be miserable and hate it and just do bare minimum. And so I am gathering my babies together and we are going to do this together. And so let's, I'm gonna share all the things. So here we go, let's jump into it. I am organized. You guys know me. If, you, if you've been here for a while, you know that that's a joke. Okay. Um, but I am surrounded by all of my books and here we go. Um, I have everything laid out on in my planner. Can you see that? I'm peeking through. You can see that. And I just did my spread because we are doing unit studies as the main Thing for history and for science this year and we are so far so good so far loving it um so we have done with the skills of natural medicine that's the only one I didn't bring down shame on me it's from campfire curriculum we are finished with that we loved it it was our favorite out of the two that we've done so far. I don't know. We are currently doing Creepy Crawlies from Gather Round. And shame on me, I didn't bring that down either. And kids, we just finished it. Like literally just finished science and I came downstairs to start recording. Um, so forgive me. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. I think we are on like lesson, I don't know, like 10, something, eight, something like that. And we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot of things that I never knew about bugs. And um, it's kind of grossing me out, but it's kind of also super fascinating. I'm kind of loving the way she's explaining different things. And yesterday, yesterday in our science class, my high schooler was like, um, why do one of these questions ask me about the mating rituals of a spider? I don't remember, the orb weaver maybe? I can't remember which one it was. We learned about a lot of spiders. And I was like, maybe because there's something that's fascinating that actually happens with the mating rituals. And it was, it was fascinating. And so that one's been a lot of fun. We use, oh goodness. <coughs> we used this book, Exploring Creation with Biology, which is a high school uh, it used to be through Apologia. Now it is separate. It is through Berean Builders from Jay Weil. Um, I don't know if he's redone this book, but Apologia has redone this book. And um, yes, and I know Jay Weil has his biology course as well. You can definitely go that route, but that's not what we're here for. What I'm using that book for is Labs. And we dissected an earthworm and I have that lab kit that I purchased a while ago when I was thinking that he was going to do that as his sole thing. And, um, yeah, but you know what? Doing science together as a family is keeping us accountable and we're all doing science every single day. So yes, so we actually dissected the earthworm and then we watched an earthworm dissection on YouTube. <laughs> And I think I'm going to begin compiling um, a biology high school YouTube playlist. If you guys want to go there and check that out, I will get that up and running soon. And um, yes. Okay. So for next month, we are going to do 
a campfire curriculum unit study. It's called Through the Eyes of a Veterinarian. I picked this one um, specifically for my fifth grader because that is his fascination. That's what we think he's going to end up being is a veterinarian. And he could blow our mind. He could, he could not do that. But I printed off, I think, the first lesson for you guys because this is so beautiful. Um, and it's going over, this is a list a list of things that you're going to need for like optional activities. So a stethoscope, painter's tape, latex gloves, balloons, a stuffed animal that can be cut. That's so sad. I don't know if, I don't know if my, my younger one will let us cut up a stuffed animal, even if it was purchased from Goodwill, like they suggested or thrift store. Okay. Um, water wriggler toy. More balloons, Play-Doh, Coca-Cola, milk, whole raw chicken, a meat injector, a nail file. Okay, so it, it has a supply list. That actually so kind of sounds like super, super interesting. And lesson 12, another stuffed animal that can be cut open. And then and then with Campfire Curriculum, you can't see this. It's, it's not great. Um, but they have links for each lesson that you can go to and you can watch videos. And then lesson one, what we're going to be doing. Welcome to the vet world, equine medicine, cats and dogs, general practice. There's part one and part two. Equine medicine again, the goat, labs, weight loss, exotic animals, part one and part two. And lesson 12 is llama time. This is 12 lessons. Um, and each lesson takes a day or sometimes longer depending upon if you want to really dig in but it could give you it could take like an hour it could take i mean campfire curriculum with the natural medicine it some some lessons took us like 30 minutes and some lessons we wanted to spend a couple of hours on so we ended up splitting those into two different days um so just i just ugh, guys this is gorgeous this is lesson one Look how pretty this is. Guess the specialty. I have not looked at this yet. I'm going to read one to you. White clouds swirl overhead as the summer sun spills through the gap in the red barn doors. Dust swirling in the rays cast onto your patient. The owners and farmlands alike gather nearby, eyes fixed on the doctor as she works. These vets often have farmers reach out to them for house calls at varying hours of the day and night. When a cow is sick or a sheep is having difficulty giving birth, it's typical for the doctor to come to the animal. And that is exactly what this doctor does. Even in the dark of night, it's actually how human doctors used to work in the olden days as well. Don't forget, seeing animals in a barn instead of an office means you are bringing everything you need with you everywhere you go. Make sure you slip on your mud boots for this one. What is this specialty? That was really fun. So that's guess the specialty. And there's a couple of those. And then sections called who can guess what's missing. And then, but that's not all. Then I noticed in the back pages when I was printing this out, they have a vet notebook. So throughout this entire unit study, they are going to be keep, keeping a vet journal. Um, and they're going to be filling out, like, what's the animal's name? What type of animal is it? Write down the timeline of the animal's events. What's your likely treatment? That sort of thing. And then I um, printed out the appendix. So there's bonus lesson content, profession connection, styles of learning, book lists, optional vet journals, and core connections. Um... <clears throat> this is talking about the corgi. Just pop myself in the face. This is a journal time. This stuff is so pretty. I cannot wait to get into this one. I'm so ready to be done talking about bugs. 
and uh, jumping into this is going to be um, incredible. Diagnosis of exclusion. How long have they held on? The results. Faith talk. So here's the profession connection. It says vets say owner communication is key to this profession. This is why our language arts core connection focuses on this. There are not a lot of vet schools, so it's not easy to get in. Vet schools look for the following when determining who to accept. Volunteer hours at a animal hospitals or shelters. A major in animal science. Well-rounded activities. Volunteer work and animal experience. This is more important than grades alone. Good grades and focus in chemistry and mathematics. While internships are not required, they are highly recommended. The difference between general practitioners and specialties can be up to three years of education. So this is really cool. This is really digging into this lifestyle. And then it talks about like the different learning styles that you can bring in. You can pull in for your children. It gives you a list of different books that you can um, read along with the unit study. Mr. Popper's Penguins is on this one. An Encyclopedia Brown, Case of the Sleeping Dog. That's for like the middle school kids. For high school, All Creatures Great and Small, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Those are the two that I know. Um, the other ones I don't rec I don't I don't recognize, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to pull them. Those are just the ones that I think I have on my shelves. So fun. So utilize what you have. And I'm going to show you a stack of books too that we are using as well. Use the library. This stuff doesn't have to be expensive. I believe that the campfire curriculum units are like 30 bucks and you get everything. You get from preschool to an adult um, thing. What am I talking about? Units to print off. And you, a lot of them have what is called core connections. And I'm going to show you a page right here. <clears throat> it has math, spelling, history, geography, social studies, language arts. So you literally can get away with just using this and a math curriculum. I would never say that you can't use a math, like don't need your own separate math curriculum because that's not enough math. But but I, I love, I love this. Here's a art to study. And then more core connections. I have not gone through this. Oh, and then here's the vet journals that each child will have with those questions on it. And there is one for every lesson yes there's one for every single lesson so i guess when we are introduced with a new case then they'll have a vet journal to use and this would be what i would consider um lab labs okay um what else so we are going to do north american birds from gather round after that North American birds. I love how beautiful these are. The scope and sequins. I just printed off the science scope and sequins. The different birds that we are going to be learning about. Um, we learned about their appearance, habitat, diet, the life cycle of 20 birds. The bald eagle, the, hum the ruby-throated hummingbird, the red-winged blackbird, morning dove, American robin, Eastern Screech Owl, the Raven, European Starling, the Killdeer. <laughs> um, do you guys watch Jess on YouTube? You should. She's got some Killdeer in her garden. It's kind of funny. The House Sparrow, Mallard Duck, Blue Jay, the Black Capped Chickadee, the American Crow, the Herring Gull, American Goldfinch, a, ca a Canada Goose, a Canada Goose. Canadian goose? Geese? Hmm. Um, the lady from Gather Round is from Canada. There. That's where they're from. 
it's kind of funny seeing it as Canada goose. The yellow bellied sapsucker, the whooping crane, and the trumpeter swan. And then we're also going to go over a couple more things like the ecosystem and some different um, different seeds and how things germinate and stuff like that. That'd be cool. I gave my kids the choice of learning about the North American birds or the ocean um, animals and they chose birds. So maybe oceans can be for next year if we continue in this. And then we are going to move into the human body. This is also through Gather Round. The human body goes over health and science, biology and science. Maintaining life. We're going over the everything that you would think that you would go over when you're going over the human body, literally, including all of the parts, all the insides. And then it looks like the immune system, health and diseases, exercises, nutrition, and physical education. So I might skip around because we have already done the natural medicine thing and we talked about a lot of those things. It looks like... Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'll let you guys know how, I mean, if, of course, I'm going to keep you guys up to date of what we're doing. Okay. And then another one that I'm crazy excited about. I put the human body before this one so we'd have a good solid foundation of it. This is Through the Eyes of an Emergency Room Doctor by Campfire Curriculum. This is, um, let's see. Let me just not stare at it and guess. This is 12 lessons long. Um, can These are the titles of the lessons. Can your heart handle it? The problem, the exam, the answer, the what if, emergency without the ER, um, case studies from real life, mysterious cases, the standoff, the physician versus, I don't know, I'm not going to, I don't know, PA versus MP. We'll figure it out when we get there. Labs. Um, lesson 11 is boring days, fish hooks, and headaches. And then, sorry, that was that was not me. That was my couch. Um, and then lesson 12 is your turn, time to be the provider. And bonus, what would you do? And I printed off, I believe, lesson one through this to show you guys, can your heart handle it? And Campfire Curriculum is story form, love it. It's going over, it's introducing a lot of new vocabulary. The question for the provider, here's an activity option. <laughs> you fill in the balloon with gel, I guess. Interesting. This is going to be fun. And then we go over the human heart. Yeah. So this is really, really, really pretty. I'll be labeling the human heart. This is a skip if you want page. We don't skip the skip if you want pages. We don't want to skip them. You can learn the path of the blood through the heart by using the following sounds. Get your family to say them with you. And I guess it's a, for auditory learners. It's like a song or a chant, maybe. And then, of course, they have their faith talks. That if you are not um, religious at all, you can skip all the faith chats. No big deal. And then it has lessons learned. At the end of each lesson, it's like, okay, this is what you've learned. So don't you feel really smart. <laughs> So that's that. That's the first lesson. Then we're moving over to farming and food. This is gather round. Farming and food goes over types of farms, grain, dairy, flour, and poultry, bee, fish farms, cattle ranches, sheep, pig, goat, fruit, Mediterranean, mushroom farms, coffee plantations, legume farms, sugar plantations, vegetables, uh, vegetable farms, farming around the world, and amazing farms. This is 20 lessons long. 
Then we will do botany through gather round. Um, lesson one, what is botany? Many parts, one plant, stable stems, luscious leaves, flashy flowers, fascinating fruits. I love these. Rustic roots, super seeds, pretty pollinators, terrific trees, healthy herbs, creative cover crops, stunning succulents, majestic moss, forest ferns, famous fungi, water and weeds, perilous plants, turning tropisms, conservation, and stewardship. Oh, they really messed up that last one, didn't they? <laughs> With all of Gather Round units, they have a recitation passage for your family to learn. This one is John 15, 1 through 11. And the idea is that you do your recitation passage every single morning and um, you have not quite memorized it, but you're a lot more familiar with it. Okay. And then we are moving into the life of a beekeeper through the eyes. Is it? With the skills of a beekeeper through the eyes of a bee. That's really fun. I truly hope we get through all of these. I really do. I have a jam-packed schedule for us and it's okay. Optional activity items that you might not already have on hand. Isn't that so pretty? Things like milk, manila or jute rope, a paper bag, toilet paper tubes, bubble wands, clear grain alcohol, honey, ginger, lemon, Ooh, that looks like fun. Beeswax, candle wick, coconut oil. Oh, we're going to make candles, people. Okay, that's a lot of fun. And I didn't print any more of that. I'm so sorry. I printed the wrong page. You guys have to go check it out and see what the lessons are titled. And then the last but not least, I think the beekeeper one is like super short too. I don't think it's 12 lessons long. Do Let's see. Yeah, I think it's a short one. So the last one is Living Off the Land by Gather Round Homeschool. These are the table of contents. The lesson one, preparing your journey. On the trail, planning your homestead, the matter of water, clearing the land, building a home. Winter is coming. Protection, baking, raising livestock, planting a garden, the matter of food. What about light? Cleanliness, foraging, clothing, having fun, preservation, education, and lifestyle. With the with the units, they come with a really beautiful color page that you or coloring page. I think this is in the teacher's book. What is this the teacher's book? I think it is. This is our recitation passage for that one. Look how pretty. And that is all I printed for that. So those are my high, high, high hopes to get through for biology. The really cool thing about the unit studies, especially gather round, I'm gonna find the link that you can, it's a quiz that you can go in and you can take. You can tell them like what grade, I think it's what grade you're in. I did it months ago. What subjects you're wanting to study and uh, they will pull a plan for you of what different units you can use. And the people that I talked to said, don't do two units at once through Gather Round. Um, but I'm doing two units at once through Gather Round. I'm doing my history units and I'm doing my science units. However, what I am not doing with her science units is doing the literature portions. The Some of the history we do, if it's applicable, some of it we don't do. We do not do the Bible pages with the units because we're doing our separate Bible. And throughout the lessons, they get more scripture in the lessons too. Through Gather Round. Campfire Curriculum is not set up that way. Campfire Curriculum, if you are not of, if you don't want a, uh, what is that word? A religious curriculum, you can simply skip 
the faith chats. Um, gather round. It's a little bit more meshed in there, in the inside the paragraphs. She talks about you know the goodness of God and thanking God for the creepy crawlies that live under the rocks and being covered by God and things like that. So it's harder to separate if you were interested in something like that. So, but yes, so the really cool thing about doing these unit studies is that I'm not simply doing biology. You can give your children's credit, your children's, oh my goodness, your high schoolers are earning credit for biology, yes. Also anatomy and physiology, also home ec, also life science. And so you don't necessarily have to get through all of these units all in one year, which is what I am striving to do, but they're going to get enough and you're going to earn, he's going to earn an entire biology credit, but he also is going to earn some anatomy and physiology credit. So I don't know if we're doing enough this year, I haven't planned it out if we're doing enough this year to give him half of a credit for like a, a half semester course. That's something that we can talk about later if I figure it out and can better articulate it. Some other things that were under the biology coverage through Gather Round was um, a dinosaur unit and the oceans one that we did not choose to do. And um, yes. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I have written down for the unit studies. Something else that I'm pulling in is Biology 101. And I, the lessons, like the video lessons, life classification, it's defining life and life classification. It's the introduction video. It's 15 minutes long. Plants is 37 minutes long. Aquatic creatures, which... We probably will not get to because we're skipping the oceans unit is 40 minutes long. Avian creatures is 44 minutes long. Land animals part one, 22 minutes. Land animals part two, 28 minutes. Mankind part one, 27 minutes. Mankind part two, 24 minutes. And then it gets into genetics, a brief history of biology, cells, and genetics. And that is 40 minutes long. So... This is a resource that I am going to use throughout all, all year long. And you just simply buy this and then you can print off the guidebook, which is right here. It is um, not very thick. It has the guidebook and the quizzes, a companion guide for the biology DVD set. Um, and so... We have not used this yet because of the ones that we have been doing so far. Because right now we are in bugs. We're doing creepy crawlies right now. But with the next one going into the veterinarian thing, what we're going to do is watch the land animals one. We will watch those videos and we will discuss it. And let me just... Um, Okay, this is really cool. I haven't actually looked at this. So this is the way it's set up. Did you guys catch that already? Probably not. So this, the introduction is just the introduction of life. Life defined, life classified, biblical classification, modern classification, and what Jesus believes. I guess we'll probably end up watching that portion of it. We should probably watch it soon, right? I don't know. It's okay. And then the third day, plants. And then it goes, the fifth day, aquatic creatures. The fifth day, avian creatures. The sixth day, land animals. The sixth day, mankind. And then it goes into genetics. That's cool. It like brings in scripture. So this is definitely a Bible-based curriculum. I think I knew that, but not laid out that way. Um, okay. So say when we get done with Creepy Crawlies, we will watch the land animal video. The, the Land Animal Kingdom, which is page 62. This is really cool. 
um, where's 62? Apparently I didn't print everything or it's out of order. I'll have to check that. <laughs> That's so funny. The one pages that I wanted to show you guys. Oh, good night. It goes from like page 59 to page 65. So clearly something happened <laughs> in the printing. Okay, whatever. So we'll move on. Um, where's the next section? Cold-blooded reptiles, crocodiles. That's really fun. This even has a dinosaur section, amphibians, salamanders, and newts. Maybe we should check that out. I'll look deeper into that as I am just on my YouTube video, just checking this stuff out. So this is land invertebrates, spiders, mites, ticks, scorpions. So that would actually be perfect for what we're doing right this second. So I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to do that. Centipedes and millipedes is something that we went over today. Um, they're fascinating creatures. Don't touch a centipede. And yeah, cool. So these are just like notes. The pages that I, I have for the video, it looks like it's just a bug and what it's about, a name of a bug, what it's about. It's just little sections. Um, land insects, silverfish, fleas, walking sticks. So this is just, um, oh, I love that. Okay, and then it has a quiz. I don't even have to make quizzes up, y'all. I love that. So they have quizzes. Um, true, false, multiple choice. Love that. Yeah, so we're just going to utilize this. And this is a full, the Biology 101 all by itself is a full credit for biology. However, it's super short. So, like, I don't know how they get away with that. I'm not certain. But it's perfect for students that aren't into it. Does that make sense? I'll keep you guys updated and let you know um, how we like it. And I'm just going to show you now some books that I pulled from my shelves. Just something that we can turn to if we need more information. If we don't want to look at the internet. That sort of thing. Um, and then, of course, you can go to the library, and I think all of those unit studies have book suggestions that you can check out. You do not have to spend a ton of money. So, of course, we have this because what Charlotte Mason Mama does not have this book. It's called The Handbook of Nature Study. We actually used that a couple days ago to look up something. This is biology for every kid. I'm going to be honest. I purchased this. I showed this to you guys. But I was trying to dig through like the biology um, experiments that you could do. And it was so weird. Like, I don't know. I haven't given up on it. But it was kind of weird. I don't think it's worth it. Okay. This is the storybook of science. Um, again, if you're a Charlotte Mason mama, you're, you're with me, you understand. And there was a chapter in here about crickets, I think, that I wanted to read to my kids tomorrow. Let's see. The Storybook of Science. This is Table of Contents. Um... Yeah, it kind of just goes over everything. Venomous insects. Yeah, we definitely need to read that one. And venom and the viper and the scorpion. The spiral snail. So I could pull. Um, There's one called spiders and then the spider's web. Things like that. So I can just pull bits and pieces and read chapters out of that for science. This is the nature reader. Christian Liberty Nature Reader. This is book five. We've had this forever. Both of my older boys read through this. Um, this is more in depth for the human body is what this looks like. And so when we move into the human body, my fifth grader will use this book. And then I have... Osborne books, the human body sticker book, because who doesn't want the human body sticker book? 
the encyclopedia for science. I think, I think I got that from my house when I was a kid, like moving out. This is also from when I was growing up, the insect world. A Christian, or sorry, a child's first library of learning. And in the insect world, the big bug, book of big bugs. These are so fun. I love Usborne. Love that book still. That's kind of fun to flip through. Our Body. Also, I had this on my bookcases when I was growing up. Gregor Mendel, the, he's the one that, uh, the friar who grew peas. I love this book, actually. And then another Usborne book, The World of Animals. It's beautiful. Um, I don't, is this an internet linked book? I do not think, yes, this is an internet linked book, so you can dig in deeper to the different but different animals staying alive just something i pulled off my shelf because i had it and this is called partners this is actually really a cool book um this is this is definitely not a christian um young earth god created the world type of book but um but you know it's good conversation, right? Apparently, this book was one dollar. <laughs> I wonder how old this thing is. Um, let's see. I can't even pronounce some of these things, but like false scorpions and longhorn beetles, osprey and night herons, <laughs> rufous kookaburros and termites. Some of these I've never even heard of. The large blue butterflies and ants. Okay. Where, where, where are they at? Where are the ants? The large blue butterflies and ants. Apparently they're partners somehow. Really cool book. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that if you're doing biology, this helped you. Or if you're planning on doing biology, this, this helped you. Um, I just want to re, re, uh, state that you do not have to put your high schooler in a biology course that he or she is going to hate and be alone and not dig in together as a family. This is definitely worth it and, and good enough and fun and exciting. And you can make biology cool and relatable to the world around them and not have them question every single day. Why am I learning this? That's something I didn't want to do. Why am I learning this? So um, today I could be like, well, you're learning this because now you know not to touch a centipede because it's poisonous. <laughs> Things like that. Um, yes. I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this is helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them below. I will try to link everything that I told you I was going to try to link. And um, yeah, without, without anything else in my brain cells, um, goodbye for now. I'll be willing. I will see you next week. Bye. The really cool thing about push it up against the wall. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, moving on. Ah, you're welcome. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me do that again so I can edit that out. Mm -hmm.